right? I tell you what, curtain walls are extremely powerful. Oh my God, it's, it's ridiculous. It's a process that if you are using Revit, if you're using BIM, every single design team should be doing this. I've got a lot of my architect friends out there. You are actually the ones who need to hear this more than anything. But right. keeping, even if you draft everything, you should still keep the model on in the view. Exactly. I mean, related to my project, mm -hmm. I, I was using curtain walls. Basically, what I was finding was sometimes you could delete mullions and change panels, and other times it's like sometimes it's hard to select it. Sometimes it's just not selectable. Maybe the, if you could go through like the settings of how that works, maybe like a default, like starting curtain wall for when you want to, when you know that you want to go through and change all the panels mm -hmm. and mullions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I had some ideas for, for curtain walls that I think would be helpful for everyone, especially when it comes to just sort of how I normally would start creating them. Um, <clears throat> so since you asked, I guess we'll start there and then we'll roll into the templates. So normally, what you'll see is on a typical template. So <clears throat> this is a default architecture template. And so you know, normally when you go in here, you kind of have two options. You have current wall one, which gives you nothing. So if you go here, you know, it's just a curtain wall system. Um, and then you have you know, exterior glazing, I wouldn't even touch that. Usually curtain wall one or storefront are kind of your, your two starting points that most, most people will have and use, right? And so when I'm, um, if you notice in my templates, so this is one of the Turner templates that we have, and this was derived from one of my architecture templates from, uh, from the larger firm I worked for. So it doesn't have everything, but I think it has the starting point that um, I want to show you guys, but the reality is what I've found is with curtain walls, you want to, you want to build into the system only things that, that make sense. So, um, usually my curtain walls will have, um, vertical, um, spacing set up. They'll have usually mullions, um, at least mullion types applied. Um, and you know, a major curtain panel applied, but, um, very rarely, unless, unless, you know, unless you have a building where it's going to be a, a, a grid system or a model where it's going to be a grid system. Am I, am I using, you know, uh, a horizontal and a vertical system? And so, and the reason being is exactly what you just said, uh, Jerry. So if I go in here and I look at curtain wall one, uh, no, it's not on this one. Darn. All right. Well, that's fine. I'll just build it. So usually what I'll have is. I go in here because um, when you think about it if you're using a curtain wall for the most part uh, it's going to be it's going to span multiple floors even if it doesn't it's going to probably have a pretty consistent vertical grid um, but the horizontal grid is usually the one that isn't necessarily every five feet every three feet something like that there's usually larger and smaller spaces so um, what I usually have built into it is you know automatically embed depending on what you're using um, that, that you want to be there um, your curtain panel, um, you know, I'll have a major one assigned usually. So if it's going to be glazed, then that's going to be my overall panel. Um, and then joint condition depends on the, on the project. Um, you know, not defining it's okay because you can modify it afterwards. And then, like I said, I'll usually have um, the vertical system somehow set up. So let's say this one's three feet. Um, and then to make your life a little easier, um, if you do have a major mullion system that you want applied, then you do want to define those in the system itself. So if I just say these are using this FCO system, I'll just apply these. Even if you're not using that grid, if you if you have these applied here, then Revit's going to automatically do it. So with this system now, right, I have my my vertical elements set at three feet. <clears throat> and then, like you said, I, I mean, I'm going to go in and, and, and set up the horizontals um, manually. Um, and the reason being is, yeah, I could do every 10 feet. Um, maybe I did that as my pattern. Um, and then, and then maybe you have something like this with spandrel and stuff. 
the problem is as you start going through it and this is probably what you realize is that um that horizontal especially varies so much um when you depending on the building and the project that it almost it just makes sense to me um to to have that always be uh its own sort of manually placed object so um when it comes to manipulating them though so let me just do that real quick so let me get rid of this crappy one over here so when it comes to actually manipulating these as you mentioned jerry it's a pain in the butt but you do have a lot of tabbing right so so you know the first one you can see right now it's selecting the whole the whole curtain wall if i tab it's selecting the mullion if i tab again it gets into the grid if i tab again i can get to the panel right and so you should you should 100 percent be able to select everything it's just a matter of where you're floating around to select it um unless you have um actually <laughs> i shouldn't say it so the reason you may not be able to select things is because they're probably pinned um <clears throat> so what i'm saying is if i was a select remember i we applied i applied a glass glass panel so right now all my panels are glass so regardless of what i do the panels are going to be glass but if i want this to be spandrel in here right i can go in i'm going to select across here i can also by the way uh if i select one of these panels and i right click i can say select panels along horizontal which is pretty cool or vertical which is kind of cool notice how there's little pins so the reason that's pinned is because it was built into the system and so i have to use unpin which is up on the keyboard or this little thing right here and now i can actually modify it because remember i said by default i want my system to have um to have uh what's it called um glass as as it's as its default now the reason jerry you may not be able to select something is because down on the bottom right hand side there's this little area that um Revit keeps sneaking little things into and what it it is good because to some extent depending on the model you're working on it's nice to have the ability to to turn these on and off but these are actually actual selection sort of settings so you can see here it says select links so if i click this button now there's a red x there i wouldn't be able to physically select a revit link which as you can imagine can be helpful if you keep dragging across and selecting things um, but you may have pinned elements so if i if i say no pinned elements notice how i can't actually I can't actually physically select any of these mullions or curtain, curtain walls. And so odds are the ones you can't physically select, that's what they are. They're pinned elements and you have pinned elements, the little X there. Um, down here you also have um, select elements by face, which is kind of goofy, but um, um, can be helpful. And so um, if you want, instead of using the edge, you could you could tab and use the, the face. But if, you know, if, you've, if you've used Revit long enough, you know that edges is kind of what you select by. And then this one is helpful. Um, so drag elements on selection. So I'm sure everyone here has been burned with this. Um, actually, I have it turned off. So <laughs> it's been burned like this, right? So I just clicked and dragged. So notice I had it off because that just drives me bonkers. Um, so now I, I can't, I, I can't, I can only click then drag, not click drag. Um, so you know, helpful if you're if you're messing in a model that's that's a pain in the butt. Um, so, so I almost always my 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 curtain family is almost always um, will have a vertical grid and not horizontal grid built into the system. If you need to, you can. It doesn't really make a huge difference, but um, that's that's going to be the the major major player in how you set them up. Um, <clears throat> now, when it comes to using wall types in it, so if I select this guy, I type unpin on my keyboard, and then I pull this down, and let's say. I want to use a type 2A7 something or other. So is this a, so this is a, a 2, uh, oh, a 7 eighths. That's kind of a lame one to use. Let me use a thicker one. Uh, so let's use a 6 inch metal stud. So for some reason, I have a 6 inch metal stud in here. <clears throat> and now I believe location line offset is what you're going to want. So normally, right, you would go into edit type when you use the panels. And so let me back out so everyone can see that. So if I go to edit type in the panels, there's an there's a offset right here. 
with walls, remember walls have finished face, center line, all that good stuff, right? So you can set how you want it to be adjusted to the center of your wall. So if I do finished face exterior, right? Now this thing is aligned to the middle of my curtain wall using the finished face exterior. Um, but if I wanna use wall center line, it's there. And then if I wanna adjust it, I can go either way. I can go six inches, five inches, oops, whatever. Whatever makes sense for you. Five inches, there we go. So now it's sliding back and forth. Yeah, I, actually, um, I think the the pen, the pen thing is what yeah. got me. Oh, it gets everyone. <laughs> and it's it's as simple as I just showed you. It's a it's a simple curtain wall with uh, applied mullions and applied a uh, a vertical a vertical spacing, no horizontal spacing. But the key is the key is you notice how I how I even even though I didn't have a spacing for horizontal. I still assign mullions to horizontal because what that does is now when you place this, right, it's going to do your verticals, right? And if you want these to be centered, you can say, I, I want this to be centered. I want this to be end, whatever. Um, but now whenever I place a, a, a grid line anywhere on that, right, it's going to apply the mullions that I tell it to because they're horizontal. It makes it much, much faster to create things. Yeah, I think that's key. I have to adjust my my template yeah. to have that. Yeah, because what you were finding is that when you don't have that, so if I, <laughs> well, I can recreate what you just did. So if I say none here, it may delete them all. There you go. So delete all millions. Now the millions are gone. And if you manually place them, even if you do them by grid line, right, they're unpinned elements. So the only way to change them again is to tab select select all instances and then flip the type or something like that you know what i mean that's the only way to physically change them because they're placed almost like an instance right i tell you what curtain walls are extremely powerful oh my god it's it's ridiculous